And we're live. Hello, everyone. This is Ninja DC. Joining again for another React video. This time for Milo Pony Season 7, Episode 17. Well, we're getting right through this season. Joining me again is a herd of bronies. Hello, all you ponies. I'm a herd of bronies. Welcome back to Let's Watch Season 7. You Nova. Hello there, customer. Welcome to Good Burger, home of the Good Burger. How will I be taking your order? <laughs> 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 yeah, Classic. I'll have I'll have I'll have like a number one good burger with a, a shake and some fries. Okay, they're taking uh, it and be censored. <laughs> <laughs> well, then I'm just gonna go ahead and go into the counter and um go back over here and oh wait, the food was right under me the entire time. Here's your I'll have shake. two number nines, a number <laughs> nine large. <laughs> Number six with extra dip. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Uh, would be taking those two uh, number nines that you initially said small or me or normal. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> because Where's you already the- told me a third large, a third number nine that was large. Where's the part where you say like, um, uh, no. Uh, and who's next in the lineup i wonder who you are oh yeah that's right hello everyone in internet land it's jen here ready for the next episode of my little pony season seven let's get the show on the road Mm, we're going on a road, road again. Trip. We're going on a road trip. I can't wait to get on the road again. Like a band of ponies, we go down a highway. Yeah. <laughs> and I can't wait to get on the road again. Like a band of ponies, we go down a highway. Yeah, just imagine Jen's avatar coming at you. Oh, just imagine if we all <laughs> ended up in the opening sequence for cars. Oh my gosh, wow. <laughs> Jen's avatar in the opening <laughs> sequence of cars. Yeah. Oh, that's a nice Sounds idea. like something that'd be more like at the end of Tenacious D and the Pick of Destiny. Oh, uh, that yes, sounds even are. better. That Get sounds even better. That. Uh, that, sounds even, that sounds even better. Mm. That sounds even better. Especially it's when you get pick. to meet Jack Black. It's just the pack of destiny, child. You know, a booby rocking because it's because it's because it's bucking insane. Because <laughs> the kids, because of the kids, the kids, <laughs> not in front of the kids. Sorry. <laughs> uh, oh, and I'm the second opinion, by the way. And from a critic first and a fan second, if you don't know by now who I am. This is your first time. Glad you could join us. Mm-hmm. Yes. And I hope you could join us on this wonderful ride that is the 8-Bit Reaction. Yep. <laughs> We're like a lot All of right. uh, these group reactions. Pretty oh, much. YouTubes. Sit down. Enjoy yourselves. Glad to be here with you. And when YouTube inevitably censors us and forces DC to make the video much lower quality, we know you'll understand. Yep. Because it's every- done to 7-Bit. Be- because basically, YouTube just likes to censor anything that might seem uh, inflammatory, derogatory, or any way offensive, yep. even if, even if it doesn't seem like it. Yep. Because that's what the current all climate. Right. All I did was drop two f bombs and s bomb, a c bomb, and imply um, Unova is the owner of Good Burger or the <laughs> ah. Good Burger having an unpleasant experience. <laughs> um, no. <laughs> oh, I must be in one of my moods tonight. <laughs> uh, well, um, certainly this feels uh, reminiscent of a few weeks, um, or maybe like a few months back, uh, like when we had episodes that were airing, but then we somehow get leaks, you know? Yeah, pretty mm. much. Uh, uh, those were the good old days. Oh, they weren't Okay. Yes. All right. Be ready. Mm-hmm. All right. Ready? 
Yeah. Right. Yeah. Oh, wait, 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 wait. I got to wait. I got to. F- <laughs> All right. My episode's gone. Hang on a second. I had it loaded, and then what happened? It came. Come back to me right now. Come so far to lose it all. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> no, too soon. Okay, fine. I'll go back to the Tenacious Two song. Thank yes, you. you are. Okay. Thank you. It's just the pick of destiny. There we go. That's a little bit. That's a little bit happier. All right, you ready? Ready. Yes. All right. Press play in three, two, one, play. Here we go. Okay, good thing. Wow, booming audio quality. To the tingling highs. I told you I could do it. Well, not exactly straight, Starlight. We've been popping all around Uh-oh. the country and we <laughs> It's like 12 steps away. Before Chrysalis's throne was destroyed, the closest magic would have gotten us was way over there. Wow! One what? roll, let's be behind. On a scale of one to ten, how happy do you think Thorax is going to be about our surprise visit? That's more than twelve steps. I Stop writing fake news. Just <laughs> a marvel at the overwhelming talent that is the great and powerful Trixie. And this is why you're my favorite egotist. Yeah, seen the narcissism gags before. I think it seems like the responsibilities of being the changeling leader are a little overwhelming. Yeah, I know. That's basically what I said. <laughs> He's dealing with the wants and needs of his subjects. And Redesign what could be better than sending the Beavis and Butthead of MLP to help you? It does sound like a lot, but are you sure <laughs> that last thing is real? Actually. Dread Mallwer? Sure it is. Thorax said it's like half bear, half mole, half raging pile of claws. What? Third starlight. We're getting a little bit of, of a throwback to Avatar creatures. Uh huh. You're just trying to scare me, but it won't work. Because not only am I the great and powerful, I'm also the unscarable Trixie. Ah ha 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 ha! Get it? Because she's not unscarable. Ah ha! Nope. And I'm not nice. Uh, and it's on! Laser beams! Yeah, now honestly, I feel like Starlight should be able to pick one changeling apart, but Trixie, why would you want to take them home? Yep. Trixie, this is not a LARPing oh, session! Come on! Ugh. Oh, come on! I really? also feel like Starlight should be able to get out of a bag. Ladies and gentlemen, your new defense is of Equestria. Wait, back it's up. Sick. Feelings and gentle cults, your your de- your equestrian defense. Your your hard equestrian bits at work. Also, that was possibly like the longest uh, pre-opening sequence we've ever had in the show. It's possible. Two minutes and counting. Jeez. Wow. Yeah. That's an academy record. Yeah. Anybody catch what uh, I did there? It opened with a bang. Yes. Yes. Hmm. <laughs> Looks like the hive has become more blue now. Calm down, unscarable Trixie. There's no better way to do that than being dragged into the middle of wherever the changeling wants to take us. Trixie, you can't even magic yourself out of a paper, out of a bag. <laughs> Isn't that Man, a new meme? I captured these trespassers. Starlight. Trixie! It's okay, Ferenx. You can let them go. But they were lurking on our grounds. In the old days, I would have already feasted on their love. Well, that's why they're... Oh, the boy. A conservative. <laughs> oh, oh, no. no. <laughs> wow. Okay, that does look I'm actually like, beautiful. Where's the Trump sign? So what are you two doing here? Make what changelings great again. Yeah. Oh, no! Well, it's great to see you. I'm sorry about the welcome committee. I thought Ember helped you get more assertive so you could deal with all the renegade changelings who didn't want to change. Oh, right. Really helpful. Assertive. I was able to convince all of them to change, except one of them, my brother. Your brother? <laughs> okay, well, that actually <laughs> makes sense. Elder Broodmate. <laughs> 
<laughs> Gotta destroy forest trees! Violent tendencies. <laughs> what a ridiculous comparison. We are nothing alike. <laughs> Even he says it. Stop doing that. I look better with holes. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, how about I show you the rest of the hive, where it's less loud and bangy? There have been a lot of changes since you were here last. I'm trying to start some new activities, since the only thing we did before was hunt and patrol. There's Peter. <laughs> oh, cute! I feel like a changeling one-man show on stage Ooh, could be very comparatively easy. This guy. <laughs> I still like how Thorax is so dorky. I think I'll talk to him. You're the ruler of the hive, Thorax. You need to do more than talk. Uh, Whoa! Not everything here is well, she certainly You're does look a little bit better with the black. <laughs> what color did she say she was? Fuchsia, fuchsia, but it looks like that was from her backside. That she was fuchsia. Fuchsia, yes, pink. Destabilizing the modern movement. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> you know a thing or two about what it's like to be outsiders. Maybe we could talk to him for you. Do you really think you could help? Thorax, if there's any <laughs> person who can help your brother, uh, it's me. Okay, I do. <laughs> it might take slightly longer. Uh, <laughs> uh, because Trixie's a narcissist. Yeah. yeah. We're ready to start work on the trail of plants. Uh, but, um, so, I have to head outside. I don't know. Okay, Starlight and Trixie, it seems like they're kind of the screw up cops in this episode. Which, I kind of like that. They should play that role more. Like the. Yeah, we totally got this. Alright. Like. We'll have to deal with like the two. Like the two. Yeah, the duo who solved their problems with the Dow of Comic Relief. <laughs> Let's do some assault. No. I know when we first met, it didn't go so well. I put you in a bag. I thought it went great. <laughs> <laughs> Not a big fan of the vines, huh? They're a safety hazard. An enemy could hide in them or use them as weapons. I don't even know why they're here. Because they're pretty. That's ridiculous. We get you. But I really like this battle strategy. This dude right here. I don't take advice from ponies. The only thing I take from you is breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> breakfast. <laughs> Doubt it. It's true. Do you know who Twilight Sparkle is? No. Well, she's the most well liked, studious, do goodiest pony in Equestria. Ugh, she sounds awful. Oh, you'd hate her. I used to. She made me unsure about my place in the world, which led me to act out against her. And I used to be a dictator who ran a village with an iron hook. Really? Hmm. Maybe you two do understand. <laughs> that is the wrong idea. Come to terms with being second best. <laughs> oh, no! Field thorns. So much wow, stuff. so you're both losers. Oh. Do to you what I did to the vine. <laughs> oh. Felt like you could have transitioned oh. into that a little My better, Starlight. Is coming along. How to go with Barry? Your brother is um challenging. A jerk. Oh, that bad, huh? It wasn't great. <laughs> He's a jerk. What? You can come with me to the. Is Thorax's wing. tail made out of a wing? Yes. No. Oh. It's a place for changelings to express their feelings so we all gain a better understanding of each other. Safe it's space. Really oh my god. Safe space. Yes. It's a changeling safe space. Sometimes I feel like I'm a blue changeling. Sometimes I feel like I'm a purple changeling. Sometimes I feel like I'm a different gender. 
Sometimes I feel like a nut. Sometimes I don't. Oh, no. Happy counselor. Oh, gosh. Does anyone else have similar concerns? Hippie Trangelings. But craft time has given me such a creative outlet. I feel great now. <laughs> everyone loves craft time. <laughs> what? Craft. Well, everyone except for you know who. Yeah. Why? Why is this turning into a hippie <laughs> retreat? This is scary. Thanks to this surprisingly you know well. Who makes me uncomfortable? He makes us all uncomfortable. Everyone he who please. must not be named. I understand Ferenc can be challenging <gasps> at times. Or I said it. Oh. He lined the hallway with thorns. I'm about to get up. Little changelings to growl and hiss. My soap's too hot. <gasps> oh! <laughs> <laughs> what? I thought the feelings forum was for sharing our problems. <laughs> <laughs> the feelings forum is for talking about me behind my back. The feelings forum is for talking about anything that's bothering you. Is there something you'd like to share? Oh Barry? no. Actually oh, no. there is. The changelings used to be a fearsome swarm. Now we sit around talking about our feelings so much you can't even stop a malware from eating all your pretty plants. I could have sent that thing packing before, but I guess now we'll just try to lead it away and hope that keeps us safe. Uh, I don't feel safe with him around. I feel safer if you were gone. I can't do that. We we are are the <laughs> I like the little. Oh, jeez. Hey, my soup's cooled down. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what? Soup if we are interrupting each other, we are not observing each other. No, yeah. oh. <laughs> Feelings is over! Wow! <laughs> <laughs> Baskets have been blown out of proportion. <laughs> well, screw feelings, I guess. <laughs> Come back and try again tomorrow. Yep. But it goes against so much for the changeling safe space. I think Pharynx is a lost cause. Mm, I'm all for second chances. Third even. But he just seems like a bad bug. And Thorax has a duty to the whole hive. Not just his brother. If he keeps sticking up for Pharynx, the hive might decide they don't want Thorax as their leader. I think he might have to kick Pharynx out, but I don't want to be the one to tell Thorax that. Me neither, but some pony probably should. Yes, you overheard this. <laughs> yep, knew it. Thorax, we have something to tell you. Over there. It's about Pharynx, isn't it? Maybe. <laughs> I know he's an aggressive warrior type, but when I was little, every young changeling wanted to be like that. Go! Do! Destroy! Yeah. Aww! Hey, is that a spike figure? Look at the little grub playing with his dolly. <laughs> Uh-oh, childhood trauma. From my brother. But Pharynx never lets him hurt me. <laughs> we were just complimenting his jollies. Again, this brings up the question of... Whoa! Hey. Oh, this brings up the question, like, how wow. are the, the specific Thank brother, you. yet the others aren't? It just... They need to clarify this. So he could bully Thorax himself. You're right, you know. You need to have tough Yeah, I mean, like, a yeah, friend of ours Aww, said that the like, closest you. thing she could come up with Sorry. is that, uh, <laughs> yeah, each <laughs> brood of <laughs> eggs is, like, considered and brother and so siblings within That's itself. Up for him. Anyway, but, like, what did you want yeah, because Chrysalis would have laid more than one set of eggs. No. Did anyone notice that the little baby change then turned into a big old freaking <laughs> bug? Um, never mind. <laughs> Come on, Trixie. Yeah, that was pretty awesome. Yeah. That was pretty awesome. What are you doing? Like, this episode's going the extra mile, visually. I appreciate that. Sure. Kick his brother out of the hive. Maybe we don't have to. Get bearings and meet me at the hive entrance. I'll explain everything. And how am I supposed to know where bearings is? 
I just saw Baron. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! It's hilarious. We'll just use one problem to solve another. I switched the trail of plants around to lure them all over here. The changelings may not be able to Starlight is more, once again the element of impetuousness. He'll save his brother, showing every pony his good side. The others will accept this... him, and Fairings will finally let love and friendship into his life and transform. <sighs> wow. I know, right? Great idea. Where's Fairings? He's gone. Gone like gone to the throne room? Gone like gone. One of the changelings said Fairings left the hive for good. <laughs> and who's gonna stop the dread mall worm? I'm leaving here. <laughs> oh dear, well, you done messed just up. Switch the leaves. You don't have to leave them there. Oh my gosh! Shut up, you. <laughs> That's more like it. <laughs> Y'all good. Gonna... The trail of plants should have led the dread mall wharf away. <laughs> I might have relayed them to lead it back toward the hive. Why would you do that? I thought if Faring saw you were in danger, the loving, caring side of him would come out when he protected you. But instead, he's out there alone, somewhere between us and that rampaging monster. I have to save him. I'm coming with you. Of course you are. This is all your fault. <laughs> Don't be too hard on Starlight. Her heart was in the right place. You're coming too. coming. Who likes ice cream? Nope. Fine. Oh sure, you could all stay here, not help Bearings, then he won't bother you anymore. It's your choice. But remember when you didn't have a choice. When you were forced to obey Chrysalis, you might have been unstoppable, but you weren't free to choose. And now you are, because of Thorax. Well, it's his brother out there. And now it's your chance to prove you're just as strong, embracing love as you were feeding on it. Now is your chance to show what changelings can really be. Not because you have to, but because you choose to! They may take your life, but they'll never take your changelings! <laughs> okay, I already know what the punchline is. Yeah, but it's still funny. <laughs> I can't blame him. If he wasn't my brother... They may take your lives, but they'll never take your ability to eat love! Something like that. You know how the scenario kind of is super reminiscent of what Twilight was talking about during Celestial Advice? Yeah. <sighs> like, in which she could have been like the... Hey, boss it out again. Yeah. Time to show you my inner bug! Okay, so he's going with the small it's... and evasive. I'm here to save you. It's a beaver? Let me handle this. A mole bear. Oh, a mole bear, that's right. I thought his name was Mole Wood. Mole, mole Wood. Okay, mole. you know what? That is an say. ugly monster. Forgot to mention in my letters that mall warps have really thick hides, and they're really ugly. <laughs> yeah, I think that was mentioned. Yeah, oh. with the rest of the swarm, not alone. Good thing you're not alone. Deus ex machina. Yay! <laughs> True. Fuck punch! Fuck trip! Fuck swarm! Changeling pile! We're out of practice and he's too tough. Shot the Joe rock at it! I threw a rock at him. Borax, remember when we were young and I made you hit yourself? Now is not the time to make fun of me, Fairing. Oh, right! I got there. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you hitting yourself? Why are you hitting yourself? Why are you hitting yourself? Wow, this thing is dumb. Why are you hitting yourself? Boy! Why are you hitting yourself? Oh! <laughs> <laughs> They're all gonna laugh at you! They're all gonna laugh at you! <laughs> They're using the strategy of bugs. 
We're bugging you! We're bugging you all They're on his skin and he's trying to swap them. What were you doing out here? Leaving. I'm done with all of you. Oh, it's just why bother fighting the mob yeah. work then? You should have left it alone. Well, I couldn't just let it attack you. But I thought you were done with us and you didn't care. I never <laughs> said that. The hive is the thing I care about most. Well, you certainly don't act like it. Well, I'm sorry if I don't get excited about pretty flowers and feeling circles and... It's a feelings for <laughs> okay. Whatever. It doesn't matter. Even if I do care about the hive, I obviously don't have a place there anymore. Actually, you do. And because we've been wrong, um, the hive may be a gentler, nicer place. But that doesn't mean we won't have to defend ourselves. Clearly. <laughs> and who better to help us do that than the only changeling who never stopped protecting us? You all I feel special scared, now. Unless you still want to leave the hive. Why would I want that? I love the hive. <laughs> so, uh -oh. a little too quick to turn the face, but, uh... Whoa! Eh. Not a bad look! He did it! He transformed! Remember, people like you better if you are pretty! Because I thought you said I was a lost cause and you were going to tell Thorax he should kick <laughs> How could you say that? Right, somebody hit Trixie. I mean, but you... Lucky for us, you weren't a lost cause. Lucky for me, you didn't give up on me. Actually, I like his design better than Thorax. Mm. That's a good design for him. everything worked out. Yeah. Let's talk about how you not only led the Mawarf to the hive, but also drove my brother away from it. <laughs> Sit down, Tracy. Grew up cops. Did bring everything together in the end. Uh, hey, do you guys want to hear the story about how I used to make Thorax hit himself? <laughs> <laughs> the shock from the punishment. Thorax is surprisingly okay with this. What Wait, what hell? was the song? What? They changed it. What? Okay, well, it looks like somebody threw in their own little touch here. Editing this. Yeah, yeah I had to make it to you two in some way. Uh, <laughs> okay. What are your thoughts? Yeah, um, I would actually have to rank this as one of my favorites of the season. Well, how about that? And, and this isn't a really, this is a really good one. This is really good. It had some funny, really funny moments. And of course, Thorax is so bloody freaking adorable. I want a, I want a plushie of him. Oh my God. Um, uh, and for Fairnix, good, um, good design for him when, uh, uh, when I guess he when, he when he transformed, good design. They still kind of kept the dark edge around him. Uh, gr great, great art choice for him. Kudos to that. Mm. Really. Uh. I mean, yeah, it went above and beyond visually. It yes, kind of went above and beyond, like having yeah, you know, Starlight and Trixie consider that Thorax might have to kick him out. I mean, I give him big props for being willing to go there. That okay, yeah, there's such a thing as someone who just. Um, is a bad influence, is just toxic, and is, yeah, right. not going to work out in a group. But I mean, yeah, that they've made Thorax have to at least establish why he is not a case like that. But mm -hmm. yeah, it doesn't mean that really good. there are really cases good case. like that. Yeah. yeah. Re really good case. Really good case for Thorax and I mean, for uh, Fairnix and, uh, uh, and, a gr and a great lesson in the end. I mean, just because the change things are peaceful, you know, they're going to have to. There is a real need because they're gonna have to defend defend themselves. Obviously, mm. I, so. I I honestly feel like uh, uh, yeah, like agreeing with uh, you, Jen. Like they definitely went too much of the extreme of like what Dorax was like representing. Right. We're all forgetting like uh, they are a species out there, like in the wild. Like oh yeah, creatures about yeah. like they've gotten themselves too. They made themselves too delicate. 
Agreed. Uh, uh, gr- agree with you. Uh, I almost agree with Fairness at that point. It, at that point, is like when I saw like the the, the feelings for I was like, you, they're hippies. <laughs> they're hippies. Yeah. Oh my or, god. What they call them? Hey, yeah. Hippies are nice people. I know, but I'm like, <laughs> but I'm thinking like, okay, you start. Okay, this is kind of getting a little scary here. Like you're changing the freaking changelings into hippies. Okay, fan art idea. Somebody make this. The chain. The reform changelings, tree hugger, and Fluttershy. There you go. <laughs> All around a bung. <laughs> uh, I, mean, I kind of hope that hippie guru changeling is, like, if we ever see them again, is still hippie guru changeling. But I yeah, think the so. rest can uh, maybe uh, dial it back a bit. Wait a minute. Pretty much. And they and they, and they they do need, and I do hope Pharynx will will toughen them up enough so that they can, they can, defend, they can properly defend themselves. Um, uh, you know, uh, uh, get Chrysalis's counter invasion and a right. big changeling battle with Thorax and Chrysalis duking it out center stage. You know what? Yes, that's the, a good one. The king versus the ex queen. Who will win? Who will win? Ooh, I like that idea because that's the mo. That's the motive there. Get Chrysalis is like is like you took my throne away from me. Away from me, I will. <laughs> your your grass, you know. Oh, I mean that would now that I would like to see a showdown oh. with thorax, with thorax and chrysalis, and this is good. Uh, love be, yeah, some versus leftovers. the love giver. Yeah. Mm. The Ooh, vampiric, all twenty eighteen. The vampiric I'm versus, to death. The vampiric nice. versus the elves. Who will <laughs> win? Yes. I like it. The love taker versus the love giver. I, like I love that. you to death. We'll love the ever, we'll love the ever loving crap out of you. <laughs> okay. Um, um, hey guys. Yo. Yeah. There's also something I have to give credit to this episode that uh, mm. even like uh, doing the cafe cast, I didn't realize until just now after my second viewing. This episode might have uh, certainly made the change lanes aside from like their cool aesthetics as uh, former villains before. Mm-hmm. They did something that earlier seasons failed to do. And I'm feel yeah. glad that th- they're doing it with the changelings here. What they gave it? the species their own characters and not just like mm-hmm. make a hodgepodge of like just bland characters like the crystal ponies. Like, or, the, or the yaks. Or the yaks. What about uh, the dragon? They gave them like, it's interesting because they gave individual personalities, but at the same right. time gave an overall like aesthetic to their personality, right. which is they're very hippie-ish. We're like they're about yeah. the feelings, which actually does make sense because they are sure. about the new changelings are about like sharing feelings yeah. with each other and all that. So right. being being more right. hippie themed actually makes sense. Uh, right. But at the same makes- time, mm-hmm. but at the same yeah. time, they actually do have distinct personalities within that. Right. Agreed. And 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 then you know what? The dragons kind of. I don't know. What would anyone say the same about the dragons, or the dragons like, or are they pretty much the same? The, yeah, the dragons, even like I can't remember an episode where they had that much of an edge. I, like, I, I, I kind of I kind of feel like there is some slight differences. Like from Gauntlet of Fire, we saw like a female dragon among right. like those cadets, like uh, just getting rough with like the guys as well. Right. Yeah, well, just being a female doesn't mean that she has a different personality per se. No, I mean, that, that I mean is granted, it's nice to see that that like yeah, dragon uh gross out, head bashing. Dude, bro, partying is not like female <laughs> exclusive. Dra- but, um, dragon, yeah. dragons seem like, uh, with the exception of Ember, dragons seem like they're the bro, they're the bro culture of uh, of Equestria, and uh, I don't know, and the, <laughs> and the uh, reform changing seems like I don't know the hipsters or hippies of it, of it, you know. <laughs> and the yaks are basically unwilling accomplices to whatever. Oh, what <laughs> Wait, the yak. Is. Hold on, the yaks are the yaks are just part are just broing it up with the dragons. <laughs> oh my! Uh, uh, the oh my! The yaks are like one degree to the left of bros. They are yes. monks. They're 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 hanging out in the same gym as the dragons. It's just like man, it's like bro, do you even live? Yak smash! <laughs> Yeah. Uh, Dragons bash! Yes, it's they're pretty much smashing stuff all across the gym to see who can smash the most. Uh, meanwhile, while the female, the... while the females of those of those species are looking at each other like, what? Or like, Ugh, again? No, 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 no. It's like, no, it's every freaking day. 
<laughs> we have to watch the male savagery at work. Why don't we make another planet? Or why why don't we make another platform just like the Gazorpazorps? <laughs> we're like, man, I'm so man, I am so sick of watching them of watching them brat bash their heads against the wall. I'm yet, sure I'm so hoping this guy will like will like ram his horns off. Uh, <laughs> Yet you don't even see anything like that from the crystal ponies, which kind of makes my point. Even the yaks feel like they have an edge over the crystal ponies. Uh, doesn't, have... any, doesn't anybody doesn't anybody have the edge yeah. of, over the crystal ponies unless you get flurry heart in the situation? Then you're just mad. Then it's all yeah, over. Cousin Oliver. So, yep. well, okay, I mean flurry heart seems like she's on her way. I will give her that. But yeah, I actually feel like they passed on their opportunity with the crystal ponies, like in their very first appearance. I thought that them uh yeah kind of getting over trauma that that could have been yeah a compelling uh sort of arc but i mean yeah uh crystal empire uh, i felt like it passed it it pretty roundly passed on its chances to do like personal things it was about just like, the tension and the the conflict and the puzzle and right. I mean, it was like in the end they just only became spike's cheering party pretty yeah. much and now and now the future and now the, the ground zero for when the future overlord of Equestria, uh, for the yeah for the future overlord of Equestria. <laughs> now, now I just want them to go to the Crystal Empire and just be like, "Hey, let's just have like a slice of life episode about the Crystal Ponies." I mean, mm, I actually guess. interject some personality. I mean, it's not too late. It's not too late. Yeah. Maybe get back to like that forgetful librarian. I well, still oh, yeah. Her. Oh, yeah. Sunburst. Sunburst. Forgot about. Forgot about him. <laughs> Well, no, yeah, how did he Sunburst. become a crystal pony? No, no, I said forgetful Liberia. I oh. was not referring to the... I was talking about the one introduced in the Crystal Empire. Oh, okay, okay. My bad. Seriously. Why did you think Sunburst was a crystal pony? And, like, and the only other interesting characters were only visitors to the crystalline. Just oh, and don't, oh, and don't, and, uh, don't forget uh, don't forget Flurry Heart. That, and, the, that, that, it seems like that's no, take it back. Just flurry, bar, <laughs> flurry heart. Bless you. Just flurry heart, cadence, and shining armor. Just pretty much the royal family. That's the only draw. That's the only. That's the only draw to the Crystal Empire. And even flurry heart is now taking center stage now. Because uh, 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 remember, she's a baby alicorn, and nobody's ever seen an alicorn born. Mm. Uh, Ready, freaky. Uh, don't forget about Sunburst and how the Crystal Empire was also the introduction for Thorax. True. Yeah, so <laughs> it was useful like a like a basically the background for certain episodes, like my loathsome games ponies play. Right. In some right. aspects. Just, true, mm, true then. Uh, damn it, why? Why is it only visitors that come to the Crystal Empire that involve something new? I mean, why can't we just see something cultural or something interesting about the characters? Like, why not make it like an offshoot of the Pie family, rock traditions, you know? But more crystal theme or more eccentric fancy or, I don't know, like just so some sort of eccentricity of like the olden ways still being mm. used even now, making them sort of like a time capsule of sorts of a thousand years ago and how like they're slowly just adding some new thingamabobs from like the current era. In other words, Crystal Empire needs a little bit more like substance, right? Absolutely. They need they need more substance just like, like, can like Canterlot. They need more lore and substance like Canterlot pretty much. Yeah, Cantalot certainly has a lot of class, a lot of important figures, and also a little bit of like some sweet spots from Spice Up Your Life. Right, absolutely. I mean, Cantalot is the uh, royal. Cantalot's the royal city. Oh, and also many uh, fences. Can be a little ham-fisted, actually, with the elitist snob ponies. <laughs> <laughs> but Crystal, em but Crystal Empire, but there's a. There's a lot of, I'm thinking there's a lot, it's, it's a lot of in, in development and there's a lot of mystery around, a mystery around it. And I've got it. And it's it, again, more, more, more cowbell, <laughs> more <laughs> substance, more substance and such and more like lore and more personality to, to the phone, to the crystal ponies. Definitely. It's not, it's not just like they're roaming around like all shinies and like crystal ponies. Uh, they're more of a culture in short. <laughs> yeah. So so basically what this whole entire conversation of devolves into is just, yeah, changeling empire reform has mm -hmm. certainly um, 
shown itself as a great world building piece. Yes. Like, oh, like, yes. Like just, <laughs> yeah, that's something you got to really appreciate it. Also the Farin and also Farinix's redemption is just enough. It's, it's good. It's a. It's a. I, it's the perfect redemption for him. It's not completely. He didn't turn into a hippie or whatever, <laughs> like everybody else. Yeah. He still has the edge. Again, it, this is uh, kudos to the color design of Fairnix's uh, new form. It's still dark. He's still got the edges. He's still got that edge to him, and that's mm. good. And and that's good for him. It's uh. It's good for him, but it's still with the new lines, he still has like, he could still be accepted, but he's still his own, his own change, his own changeling pretty much. <laughs> right. Which is, it's, and I that is great. And that is a good redemption right there. Uh-huh. Like, unlike a certain uh, race that got redeemed all of a sudden at the end uh-huh. of the season. <laughs> like, you know, I'm going to have to say, you know, I'm going to have to say, Pharynx is, I have to say, top three, I'm gonna say, you know, this is he. He he makes my top three redemptions. He's number (gasps) three. He's number three on my redemptions list. Yep. Wow. He's 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 number three. Huh? Yeah, I did like it. Yeah. Think about well. Yeah, I'm not sure if I what my redemption ranking would be, but um, yeah, I will um, I will say that you know I liked that they kind of had to meet him halfway. That like, yeah. Right. The and there's an abs- had to understand one another right and there's an absolute reason for him to be there to to be there because there's an actual they didn't think about the outside dangers they, that could like they, still prey on that could still prey on them it's like they basically yeah. forgot about like uh how in this how much of a necessity like defending the hive was exactly all that they were doing and, which was which yes. was an absolute on one end for chrysalis side right and Farinix never forgot about, and never Farinix never forgot about that, and that can be very, and that is very useful. Mm. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and I will say this episode is not flawless. Um, I thought that uh, what was it like the yeah the changelings all showing up at the end was a little bit of a Deus Ex Machina. Yeah, um, yeah figures. Start like Trixie's humor was a little bit forced. I mean, uh, this like uh, how do I describe it? Yeah, this episode is like the uh, I don't know. The heavyweight champion who wins his way up to being heavyweight champion because uh, that all the all time great has retired and there isn't another one like it. In this season, like it's in my top three, but I mean, like on my grading scale, I feel like it's a, a borderline great, like a B plus A minus kind of episode. Like it does a lot of it goes the extra mile. It does a lot of things I appreciate. Uh, I feel like. Um, yeah, um, uh, and you like wanna... other episodes have executed those corners like a little more smoothly and such. Mm-hmm. Mm. And you want to know something? Mm. <laughs> this might be um, this might be like uh, the best uh, the best uh, new showing for like uh, like one of the new writers like improving from like their previous exploits since the writer uh, for the episode um, is uh, Kevin Lappin. The and hard guess... to say anything guy. Um, Actually, I think that kind of fits. I think, like, overall... Uh, he's not going, the hard to say anything guy. He's the honest not, apple yeah, guy. honest apple guy, Red. That's, that's what... I, the episodes are right next to each other, and I don't know too many ages, but... Um, <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, uh, like... Um, I actually thought that, for the most part, he showed that he can be a good and enthusiastic writer in a in, uh, honest apple. Mm. Okay, here is how I would summarize Honest Apple and the writing in it and such overall. If you give me a minute here. Mm -hmm. I would summarize it. What? What What the heck is that? I have no idea what's going on. It was the Antiano Sonata again. What? What the hell? What the hell, Sack? What the hell? Do you always have a a piano right next to you? (laughs) No, just this time. (laughs) 
Was that supposed to be like from Rona the Oodalani Oodalani Golly Well Day? And all of a sudden, bunch of noises. God damn. Uh, I don't know if that song has a, it's called I don't know burlesque or something like it that. It sounded but, it sounded like oh it sounded like Udalali Udalali from like Robin. <laughs> and then all of a sudden punch punch punch. Uh, mm. <laughs> that was brilliant. <laughs> 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 oh, it's brilliant. All right. But yeah, for the most, I liked a lot of Honest Apple, but I didn't feel like it. Uh, yeah, might might have gotten painful at one point or another. <laughs> uh, like, uh, even though I would say like the setup for that that episode might have been a bit uh, nonsensical if you look at it in in some ways. With the, uh, <laughs> but yeah, I, don't know, yeah. I thought like the um sometimes an expert can't see the forest for the trees sort of uh. Like just in case, reason to bring Applejack on board. I didn't mind that. Right. Mm, uh, but yeah, it certainly did get uncomfortable when we see Applejack destroying one's creation. Which, while this episode happily happily avoids that trope of like just only tearing away like some of like the fl- flourish of like the hive, yeah. but not that much. So it wasn't really like uh, that traumatizing. Yeah. No, yeah, the Applejack um, becoming like painfully oblivious and forceful and destroying the hat. That would be the musically unpleasant part. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, well, uh, I certainly, I, well, there's also a certain thing we also have to applaud this episode for. Like, even though it might seem like it shows the vices of like the relationship, Starlight and tw- and Trixie, the, how much of a screw up pair they make! Oh my yet, gosh! Yet how like their flaws like just constantly like bouncing off of each other, like like Starlight's bluntness of like uh, clearly derailing like Trixie's glory parade. Meanwhile, Trixie's constantly being like, "I never doubted you for a second, even oh. though I completely doubted you for the last five minutes that we were walking alone on this path." It seems like they're like the Laurel and Hardy or like the good cop bad cop duo of this. Yeah, I like. Yeah, I want to see them be like yeah, capable Balkan skull or something like that. Oh my god! Yes, 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 yes cop. Balkan skull. <laughs> Oh my gosh, perfect. Bulk and Skull. That's the best. That's the best uh, description yet. Bulk it's and like, Skull. It's like Bulk and Star- Skull, but good at magic, yeah. It's like Starlight's yeah. inclusion into the series, like like only like prove positive, like around the um like at, around like the uh, no second prances and afterwards, like but this season is like, hey, let's do like the let's do like some of the central episodes actually develop or showcase like the bad sides and the good sides of the dynamic. And it's just like, yes, yes, yes. We needed a bit more of this, but like, yeah, even though Starlight had like a messy entry into the series, it's like mm-hmm. it's like moments like this, it's like Okay, she might be an all right character by herself. Like, eh, you could take it or leave her. But I like, mean, once the writers get, did, like, I'm sorry, I got, but I but like done. once, but like once she gets together with like these misfits and actually like uh, helps lead the way, even oh. though she might be deluded, that's where she shines. Unlike how in like some season six episodes, she just didn't click well, even if at all with the main six. Like, even though they say, oh, good, she's our friend. And it's like, no way. You guys are, this is clearly like the Mod Pie situation all over again. Right. But like, you're forcing it too much. It's not going to work, guys. Just let her have her own friendship the gang with Spike and Amp. Well, I'm not going to say Amber yet. Spike, Dorax, uh, Discord, Trixie, Mod Pie. Right. <clears throat> just And just wait until we see w- what other misfit characters can get added into our network. And then pretty soon we're going to have the the uh, the defenders, essentially. It's pretty much. I, like a, 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 I mean, like, the writers, well, like, the um, even in, yeah, the, se- the first season Starlight appeared in from episode to episode, they almost couldn't seem to make up their mind on what she was like or what her problem was. But if you think about it, like, even the uh, 
characters and writers have done just a downright terrible job reforming. It usually, after they do, it usually results in an interesting character. Mm-hmm. Or what? Uh, I think we've got Sunset Shimmers, um, what, Silver Shill, uh, Babs, it now. For the Babs, I don't know if we saw her much. Um, <laughs> like, I mean, Gilda the Grip, um, I take it back, Gilda was always fine as a character, but. Um, oh, oh, you also appreciated her despite how everyone hated her 90s slang. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, you can see what the intention was with that, and I, I appreciated it. Uh, I, I would also agree. I didn't hate Gilda at all. Frankly speaking, before like the Lost Treasure of Griffinstone episode, I got a weird attraction. I I, I I sort of developed like a weird interest in Gilda, which got me like a plushie of her. But then like the episode happened, I was like, okay, she's good. Wait a minute. She should be the next pal. Oh, man. I can't wait for a Gilda and Starlight episode then. Nah, yeah. I don't, I don't know about that. Oh, come on. It would be fine. I don't know, hey, I don't know about friendship that. Friendship with Rainbow Dash, I feel like that's a uh, too pivotal for both of them. Well, uh, I don't know. I, well, I don't know. Give it, give, it, give it the right writer, and maybe, I'm thinking, give it the right writer, it could, and plot, it, it could, I don't know, it could work, maybe. Mm-hmm. I mean, the, I mean, the uh, I don't know. I mean, the plot has to be just right, you know. It has to be just right. It can't be too hot. Can't be too cold. It be just be just, just right. Plot you know? is too hot. I said in the Brett feelings forum. What? Uh, the changeling with his soup that's too hot. Oh, that one. <laughs> <laughs> my soup's too hot. What? I thought this was for sharing feelings. Oh my gosh. It's funny. It's kind of a good thing that it's kind of a good thing. I'm so glad that they they turned around and they realized like, well, you know, we need to protect ourselves because they're like really starting to become like wusses. <laughs> I don't even know about like wusses necessarily. Like they weren't I don't know, Jimmy from Ed, Ed and Eddie. They just like uh, didn't keep in shape, I guess, essentially. Well, like I get I get but I guess so. But, but the good thing is, is like they had just that device to kind of get them out of that. Yeah. But then again, what what do changelings eat now? If they don't eat love. Uh, apparently, they have. Um, uh, don't tell me they're vegans now. Don't well, tell me they're vegans they do, now. It's just they. Uh, they have a potluck. They, Sh- they share it. love. They have a potluck now. Oh. Literally, and all oh, I was like, thinking about is Prince Virginia saying, "Like you cheap fucks, why, why are you cheaping that out of a buffet?" <laughs> Well, although I will say, like we saw, it was implied that Thorax eats now, like <laughs> going to get something to eat with uh, Starlight. So, I mean, I don't know. They might be in danger of becoming inconsistent with that. I, the way, at least, it seems because they seem to have, they don't seem necessarily inconsistent so far, at least. It seems to be sort of they're born in the line where they seem to share feelings like regular, like changing than used to, but they at the same time, they do <clears throat> eat regular food now. So it's I, like, um, yeah, although, well, they implied that, like, I mean, I don't know. So, that, so like, I, now, that, now that they're doing it, well, now that they're doing it, the share the love way, they can also eat real food just because sharing love is just that much better an option for them. And, like, I mean, I, like, I wouldn't have, I guess, too much trouble believing, like, okay, sure, they can eat real food too. It's like they're not allergic to it or something it just i don't know there seems to be a slight like we don't care vibe i mean like if you have to think of an explanation for yourself that generally means the writers didn't care to like not that there aren't instances where people um complain there wasn't an explanation and they just didn't bother to work out the one that was meant to be there but i don't know this is such a situation But no, I'm not complaining. Good episode. I agree. I agree. Mm-hmm. Good episode. What's everybody's stance on season seven as a whole? I know there's 
a lot of holes. In, there's a lot of holes in my viewing of it. <laughs> but, um, uh, um, honestly, compared to season six, like season seven, kind of got like um what currently feels like duds mostly out of the way with like the last dud really being uh, honest apple. Right. Just a- after that, everything else, like the worst we really got was probably like triple threat. And that is considered like the most marginally better of the formula spike episodes in which like he is very much inexperienced and in, like trying to solve this issue. And even right. then it's like, like the best example of that. Episodes of the season. I will complain like, Flurry of emotions, uh, celestial advice, and triple threat is the one you hate on. And uh, no, for me, it's like honest apple, uh, celestial advice, and um, uh, I, mean, I, 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 mm. I feel like it's customary to say each new season is possibly the best one yet. And after we just had a season that was like, yeah underachieving enough so that it was really hard for anyone to say that. I feel like now people are going to have a hard time not saying it about season seven. Uh, uh, it, I feel like it, I feel like it, just, there's a lot of episodes that just don't quite get there for me. I mean, it is better than season six to me, but I like, I don't know. I, I still um, feel like it's, uh, it's kind of like season four and that like, it's that, it's that season that's trying to get there and remains to be seen if it will. But, well, you know what? I, I, I mean, I might have been, I think I took to season four still a little more than this. Like, this might be the um, season that tries really, really hard for a, a B on my card. Or a B minus. Uh, I mean, like, season four's beginning honestly has a bit more holes than even the beginning of than even, like, say, the beginning of Season 7. Uh, I think it's the other way around for me. Like, me, they both um, were, like, yeah, having trouble getting there, but I think, like, of the two, I got more out of the first half of Season 4. Uh, uh, I, I definitely see your point. I mean, like, for me, like, I really started getting hyped up with, like, Episode 10, uh, mm-hmm. that being a royal problem. And then that might be one of the places where the different... Although, granted, like... Um, episode that everyone's like, oh wait, no, season six just yeah changed everything. Just yeah, blew the roof off of it. The episode for season four there was uh, Rarity <laughs> takes Manhattan, I think. Oh uh, god, no! I didn't love um, uh, what you call it, Royal Problem. You know, eh, I hated Rarity takes Manhattan. So. I me too. I I don't. I hate Rarity takes Manhattan. I feel like it's the trash that deserves to be burned because of all that forced generosity, and it wasn't the best foray into Manhattan ever. That honor goes to season five's episode with Rarity and Applejack. Main oh, yeah, 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 yeah. baby. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, so okay, okay, maybe. So like, okay, I guess the comparisons are there, but I mean, like. Uh, what I got more out of, like, okay, we're just the first half of season four. Um, I got more out of Princess Twilight Sparkle than I did out of Celestial Advice. I, uh, what? so it seems like, so it seems like we're hit. It's like it's up, and, it's kind of up and down. It's like we're having some good episodes, we're having some good episodes, we're having some kind of eh episodes. Um, has any, did anyone, um, oh. There's been bad episodes for season four. Only, right. Only well, one. actually, season seven for me is like super, super middle of the road. Like it. Yeah. Like so many episodes, it seems like it tries so hard to end up with a. At Here's one, my. Stick to the grades, like a B minus or a B on my card, right. and then occasionally you get a perfect pair, right. or a discord and harmony, or this. Right. Here's my overall thoughts because we actually do have to finish up the this episode yeah. um, discussion. Mm-hmm. But uh, my main thoughts about season seven, like, well, it's too soon to say my final thoughts on because we're still like only three fourths the way through it. But <laughs> I would say season seven is at least noticeably better than season six and five. Agreed. Mm-hmm. Um, I have to check my score how it ranks. If I agree with that, anyway, sorry, go ahead. As I at least I don't know how. 
I don't know if it's better than season four yet because it depends how it finishes right. it. I, I mean, but agreed. It is on track in my mind to be better than season four. I but don't know. I'll season, I don't know. Season for reference, I really hated the opener and closer for season four. Right. Like that's a well, well, reference. Well, you, I am. Well, you hated the closer. You hated the closer. Well, you hated the closer. I hated the closer. I hated the heretic. I'm just kidding. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm kidding. Closer. This was. I felt that was mediocre. Like I felt. Wow. I didn't, wait, wait, wait. You felt you did. Wow. You thought the battle with Tarek was mediocre. You well, people love to throw backlash at that, like, oh, an action scene in My Little Pony. What kind of a hacker? No, the action was great. It just the continuity, like the story behind it, was like had so many oh. holes. I, actually, oh, I mean, I okay, okay. I found it to be Fair one enough. of the most like consistently written of all the two parters, like. I mean, Return of Harmony has five mile wide holes in it. This right. has a couple, but I mean, considering like everything they tied together, just like fitting so much into uh, the space, I actually thought they did beautifully. I mean, like oh, yeah. Twilight's Kingdom kind of made me hate Celestia for like a long time until a royal problem happened. Right. Yeah, I was of, thinking. Like, I was thinking was. season four. I was thinking. See, I love. I loved the ending of season four because I was thinking. That okay. Originally, I was thinking, uh, um, you know how Twilight becomes a, an Alicorn in season three. I I will still maintain that I think she became an Alicorn too early. I still think that the third season was a little too early for her, and I'm thinking she had to go. She had to go through some more to earn something like that. Apparently, you could earn your Alicorn status. I'm thinking you're going to have to go through some crazy trials in order to get that to get that kind of power. And in this case. She had, and in this case, she had to go, she had to not just to, to just, she had to take on all three princesses power. She had like three times God mode and she could have pretty much leveled Equestria with it, but instead she did good with it. And I'm thinking, well, you know what? If you can handle, you can handle big amounts of power and you're not going to go mad with it. Okay. Give her, give her a horn or, or give her, give her wings. Give her some Red Bull, whatever. Give her some Red Bull. Give her wings, you know. Princess time, you know. I was thinking that's the trial that she would have to go through in order to become to become Princess Twilight. Um, but I don't know. It, it, all the while, it maintained that okay, maybe she does deserve her rank. I don't know, but uh, I don't know. But the but the action there was the action there's oh my gosh, no. And if anybody says anything bad about the action, oh my gosh, it's. It was great. I I just uh, I just feel like um what um DC was saying like uh, season four definitely has like some a lot of highs like even during like the oh, first yeah. half it was like it kind of felt like it was alternating between like a, what could, what some would consider a bad episode right. but then what would consider were, like a a good or even a great episode right but, like it's a, but then like but then like looking at like season five it's like hmm it's five was. Like, Five definitely had the had the debut of the lackluster kind of ending. Mm. Oh, no, no, five, five. Like, let's not talk about remark. Let's just not yeah. talk about the remark. <laughs> no, okay, fine. But, fine, um, fine, fine. Fair enough. Yeah, the main thing is like I don't know. Like, I think I was being a little harsh when I said I hate the final for four, but I just <laughs> felt it was overhyped. Is a good way because it's, I feel it's not as good as the closer in for the final episode for season one or two. Okay. Um, okay. Two had a two and four. I think had the best end and the best closers. Two and um, four thought had the best endings. I might side with you there. Although I will agree with you, DC, on not dismissing one. I think that right. One was great one too. Four, which also happened uh, yeah, to be like, my three favorite seasons. I think they had the three best closers. I I I, 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 I would honestly say like uh, the one thing six, I six and. Uh, Four. It's not a surprisingly good closer. I mean, it might be my favorite after those. Yeah, actually, three. six I will give credit for. I think actually, oh, I like. I would, I would say, I would say, I would like season six's final episode more than season four's. So I would say, like huh. one and two, or season ones and two are still my favorite. But like right, right. behind it would be season six. Okay, fair enough. Fair enough. Inter interesting. Interesting though, but. 
But the uh, main thing I just wanted to say with four is I just hated the opener. Like I, oh. I remember coming oh, out of oh, video oh. hiatus just to say how much I hated the opener when everyone else was gushing okay. over it. Oh, 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 yeah. oh! Don't don't think you're alone on that, DC. I mean, it's, it might be one of the weaker two parters for me. Like it, you know, weak. the part two has other more huge holes in it, the completely unnecessary nightmare moon scene that contributes oh, nothing and. Apple. Stuff, yeah, Applejack, that, but, okay. No, just all it, the main things like, were treated like garbage. Like, the re- besides Twilight, all of them were treated like garbage. That, that just pissed me off, like, so much. Right, right. I don't know about that. Like, I actually thought it kind of, especially in part one, like, kind of mastered the whole bittersweet, growing and changing tone. But but then all of a sudden we go to wasteful flashbacks, which contributes to nothing. No, that's oh, true. Like, it's, I don't know. Like, it... For me, it was, well, I mean, I, I still consider it a great episode, but kind of an A minus great because it's like high highs and huge holes to me. No, 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 it's like, no, for me, it's like those holes caused it to go down to pop to very much a mid tier episode. It has some good qualities, like, say, like, a, like, it has some good qualities of like introducing like the tree uh, and. But it only has like the uh, and also tried to have like a good facade of Twilight trying to command like the royal guard to like continue doing whatever they were doing, even though it was about to delude us into thinking like, oh, this is Twilight stepping up as a leadership role. No, this isn't. This is her right. just telling the, the the guards like continue working what they were working, and then right. like going to, into the tree and stuff. Like the only backstory that seemed to make sense was like a. The, the the celestial sisters discovering the tree and the Discord flashback because of right. Thunder Seeds were a thing, but it's also it's kind of nice seeing like oh I unintentionally caused this dilemma to happen because of like seeds planted a thousand years before I even remembered. Hey, yeah, right. of the villain right after they decided that they oh, shouldn't yeah. just to rashly judge him for being the villain, like it, it has its problems, but I mean. But sure, then I, again, but then again, I just think I'd have to uh, debate for more time than we have left. So, but the, right, right. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, we, yeah, let's uh, get final closing thoughts for this episode. All right, okay. all right. So. I say, I say, like, a, uh, this was a re- this was a really good, really good episode. Um, yeah, that's some great, some good moments there. Oh, one thing, one thing I want to mention Starlight had an interesting, had a, um, had a good moment about you know when she's rally, uh, riling up changelings about uh, about Pharynx and such and and uh, was like way to go to step up. That's so good moment there. So lots of so yeah overall good episode. Mm. Uh, certainly, I feel like this episode really made me laugh my funny bone off with uh, Trixie's uh, antagonistic egotism shown like in, a, like in a playful manner and seeing it all be demeaned at the very end thanks to King Thorax. And I'm just like, <laughs> I might hey, I might not, I might dislike Rainbow Dash so much despite her being very much clearly in the good guy's position <laughs> with her uh, jockiness egotism. But for Trixie... I appreciate her so much more. I don't even care like if it rubs a lot of people the wrong way. It rubs me the right way. Like I just enjoy her very much. You and would, Fox, who, who is it, Trixie or Rayo Dash? I I really enjoy Trixie's okay. egotism a lot. So you like her hers more than just I'm awesome, Rainbow Dash. Oh my god, I want to shoot that phrase out of everyone's mouth. <laughs> uh, Thanks, because of like Rainbow that. Dash, now you can't hear the word awesome anymore without gagging. <laughs> wow. Well, I mean, I would take Rainbow Dash at her best over Trixie at her best any day of the week. I don't feel like Rainbow Dash has been at her best for a while. <laughs> she's kind of get she's kind of been getting a little bit away from it. Little bit. Not that much. Yeah. 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 All oh, that yeah. campfire tales episodes, yeah, that one. To a little, yeah, that one. But imagine, <laughs> but imagine those two. Imagine those two. Me like, okay, who? Um, imagine like this. The, these, just those two. Get, get in a boast off. Who can be the most? Who can be the most boastful pony of all? So Tracing basically, bo- boast, 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 boast part two. Bingo! That's it. You ever see that comic where like a. Uh, uh, who in Equestria can be the biggest jerk? Oh and the final God. round after Trixie finishes, like tearing blue blood to pieces with the uh, 
insults and such is Trixie versus Angel Bunny. Oh my god. Oh, all right, she's we already know how this, can, we already know how this is gonna end. She oh, says, bring what? it on. I can do anything you can do. Anything cat like bring on anything. So he drags Fluttershy onto the stage and holds up a sign that says, Fine, punch Fluttershy in the face. And if she uh, can't uh, do that, he uh, went because oh, he was a big enough cure see, to see, volunteer her for again, that. Again, you can't mess with Angel Bunny. That, that yeah, thing's exactly. a freaking evil lagomorph. <laughs> Angel Bunny's freaking evil. And basically, yes. it's what mm. would happen like the um, a major antagonist of Watership Down would all of a sudden be shown oh to like, the audience. <laughs> Just be like, oh, no, 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 wait. No, wait. Not the cult leader. Maybe the guy in charge of the junkyard. It just made actually talking about Angel Bunny made me remember like one of our uh, cards against cards against humanity captions <laughs> for, for for Angel Bunny. <laughs> what was that one? Oh, the one where <laughs> the one where you like it's rape time. Oh yeah, I think oh, I made that one. One of yeah, the most epic. One of the most epic captions. Yeah. I remember that. Oh my god, I, I I have not forgot. I have not forgotten that. And just and then are you like, and then when you were talking about like Angel Bunny, like punch Fluttershy shot in the face, like oh wait a minute, this is from the rabbit that was like it's rape time. <laughs> <laughs> of course, <laughs> of course, of course, <laughs> like uh, Angel Bunny evil. Of course. Mm. Now I have an, now idea idea artists out there in the comment session draw Angel Buddy in M Bison's costume. Go! Oh my God! Um, I don't hear you drawing. I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, uh, like, and I'll also like to point out that like uh, Dorax himself, this episode, I think he's now gotten himself a foot into like my favorite characters category at last with this episode's performance of him. I still think he's so cute. I want I want a plushie of him, and I name him George, and I hug him and pet him, and <laughs> so it's, cute. I will hug him and pet him and squeeze him. <laughs> it, it's, it's, it feels like it feels like like um like the riding like Dorax felt like a male Fluttershy to me that didn't really hit his stride yet. But then it's like all of a sudden it's like you already reached season six already. Damn, Dorax. Look at you go. Look at you oh, go. Definitely. But but it's definitely different enough for him to, to identify himself as his own character in the sense of like, I'm just going to be realistic. I'm not going to be super antagonistic or overreactive as much. I'm right. just going to be real with you guys. And it's like, with this a triple threat, it's like, my goodness, Sorax, I think I would want you as a leader. Not yet. Right. But once you reach that threshold, it's like, You'll be the ideal leader Equestria needs. Exactly. Oh, Dora. Exactly. Oh, Dora. <laughs> he's got some. He's got some ways to. He's got some ways to go. And a great uh, comparison to like kind of Fluttershy there. And I didn't ever didn't really think of it that way. But yeah, he, he's definitely seeing some. He's definitely Thorax. He's definitely the nice guy. De definitely the nice guy. But he he's got to put. I guess. Can you call the changing that's, that's actually one interesting re in interaction we haven't always seen yet was Fluttershy and <gasps> Thorax. I want to see that. Fluttershy yeah, and on. Thorax? Yes. Come on. Yeah, I want to see that. Wait, wait, see that. Wait, a minute. wait a minute. Maybe Discord could be the one to like uh, introduce the thing. I mean, we could get some more Fluttershy. Oh, my. oh wait, wait. <laughs> I mean, come on. Uh oh, oh, I detect a ship. Oh no, 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 no. You can't, you can't just I mean like the flutter cord ship. Come on. I could get I could definitely get behind a a flutter racks. Flutter racks. <laughs> oh flutter racks. You know what? Racks. I'll get behind it. I'm shipping it. Bye. I'm shipping it. <laughs> oh my god, Flutter Shy. Well, I mean, like it would it certainly wouldn't be that demeaning. It would actually be certainly a great calm relationship. Yeah, definitely. I mean, Fluttershy could sometimes be like the reactive pony in that case. But then again, but then again, now I think about it, that would almost make about a sense as Flutter Mac, wouldn't it? But now that ship can't happen because of uh, Sugar Bell. Too. Oh, you're right. It can't happen. No, it can't happen because of that. Because still, I don't know. <laughs> I can imagine the two be like, um, um, 
well, um, um, and I'm like, oh, how do we do this? How, what's going on? How do we do this? <laughs> There'd be a lot of shy glances and such. <laughs> Yeah. I'd be like, oh, well, okay, this always sounded good on paper. <laughs> <laughs> oh. This always sounded, I knew it, this always sounded good on paper. <laughs> oh. still, wouldn't, still wouldn't mind an interaction with Fluttershy and Thorax. It's, it's, it's certainly like, as long as we vocalize it enough to like the writers so them to like yeah. uh, get onto it. It's like Exactly. And and I like, keep keep Fluttershy in the assert in the assertive enough stage that she's in now. Well you got so, something there. Like like seriously, like even with like fame and misfortune, it's like you have it. You have it. Run it. Don't run it to the ground, but you gotta continue on. You're making her the most interesting in the main six after multiple seasons right now. Right, that's the development that she's been that she's been needing, honestly, and it's been and it's been happening pretty much. And, and it's like honestly, it feels like when the show first premiered, Fluttershy was basically like everyone's like majorly favorite pony, mostly for like the cute and shy reasons. But yeah. now it's like I actually like her so much more. Like she's outside Pinkie Pie, and I'm sorry. I'm sorry, but like Fluttershy right now is like. She's kind of like in the second rank right now with like Spike at the top at the moment. And it's like afterwards we got ourselves like, uh, let's see, um, uh, a, tri a Trixie, then follow that up with uh, Inky, then follow that up with uh, Discord and uh, Guild. Uh, no, no, no. You know what? No, no, no. It's going to be, <laughs> it's going to be Spike, Fluttershy, Trixie, Dorax. Okay. Pinkie Pie, Discord. Wow. That's it. I'm sorry. Like, Rarity has really fallen off the bandwagon until, like, recently with Campfire Tales. Like, Fair she's enough. gotten some, like, a momentum back with that episode. I like Charlie Forever Philly, and I'm the guy that's not even, like, that Rarity crazy. <laughs> I'm not Rarity, just, I'm, I'll have you know that Rarity is my, is my spirit animal. Uh, <laughs> and I'll... And I'll have you know that Pinkie Pie is essentially like my energetic spirit animal with how she takes logic and such. Yeah, Rarity is my creative spirit animal. DJ Pwn3 and Octavia are my uh, number one ship. Spike is essentially like my, uh, basically like how I'm viewed by my, my older sister, essentially. Ah. Like, yeah, it's oh. really much like that, and I can really simplify with the guy there. Okay, does anybody else have any other opinions? <laughs> what about Alex? Um, yeah. Sorry. Well, I wanted to say one thing. Um, you know, as soon as I saw Thorax's, um, Thorax's brother, des brother's design, I saw a potential parallel of Celestia and Luna. Oh, oh good point. Very good point. Did not even think about that until you said That's, that. It makes me want to think, uh, compare them. Very good point. See Wait a how minute. They Wait a minute. I just realized something. This is the first time we ever had an episode focusing on two brothers. Yep. Holy oh, crap. Wow. Mind blown, people. Holy crap. Dude. Mind blown. I was these are the only. These are also the only two male characters that have royal positions, other than shining armor. You're right oh, again. Oh, again. Well, there is Prince Blue, Bro Blue Blood. Oh, Which, nobody cares. But nobody cares. Nobody about cares about, about, about Beyond season he one. He has yeah. some sort of position. We just don't know exactly what it is. He's but apparently no. Celestia's nephew. That or whatever isn't it is. important enough to be recognized. Exactly, and, and again, nobody cares about Blue Blood. <laughs> um, uh, eh, just you know what? I'm actually gonna grade this episode as a great. So that's just, a, that was some great points you made there. You made there, Alex. Alex, yeah. it's the the first time we're seeing brothers, and also that they're in positions of power. That's uh, the first time we've we have not seen that, and we've not seen that till now, which <laughs> is which is great. I did. I didn't even think about that until you said that. Like, ah, oh, bl so mind blown. Already they're doing a better job than Shining Armor. Oh, 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 oh
for all. Mm, I know we're 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 gonna have to we're gonna have to agree with you there. So still have no idea like what Shining Armor's position is, even though he's prince. He of doesn't the, do he's anything. Like co, he's like co-ruler of the of the Crystal Empire, but yet he's captain of the guards. Like, what? Wait, like how does he balance that? I mean, like, what shouldn't he be? Like, shouldn't he have to go to cancel out? Like, unless he gave that position right. of power to someone else, which I think not right. Right, right, and also remember being father, being father to the uh, weapon of mass destruction known as her Flurry Heart. Yeah, I mean, then again, Shining Armor still is interesting in uh, how he has like those nerdy tendencies come up every now and then. That, is, wacky okay, reactions. that, that was very endearing that he has nerdy tendencies. That that, no, that was very endearing. Though. It's it's like it's like the it's like the only thing I find interest in the Crystal Empire, really. Yeah. Anything else, Alex? Um, I like this episode. That's it for my final thoughts. Cool. Mm. All right. Just to give, I guess, my final thoughts is, um, I'd say this is an overall good balanced episode. Um, mm. probably within my the top five of the season so far for me, but probably in like the fourth or fifth spot sort of thing. Mm. Mm-hmm. So it was like one of the top episodes, but not I wouldn't say the best of the best contender sort of thing. Fair enough. Uh, yeah, I thought it was borderline great. Like I said, uh, just kind of, just kind of, it, it makes you feel warm about the idea of the new changeling designs. Oh uh, yeah, it it it, yeah. it really does help with like the fact that Fanex uh, still kept the dark colors for his new changeling design. It's like I like that, guys. We still have hope. We could still oh, be God. dark. I like that. But uh oh yeah, and also the fact about the therapist po- uh the therapist changeling reminded me like uh like an alternate reality of like what would happen if the Rick and Morty therapist didn't uh <laughs> had herself composed that much. <laughs> oh man. God Jesus. Woo! On a hairpin trigger, she just lost it's like no more I'm feeling happy hour. <laughs> <laughs> just uh and also soup soup changeling best changeling am i soup right cha- <laughs> soup changeling best changeling <laughs> now we just now i just want to see yeah. like uh, the like i'm at soup skit with that changeling and then we'll be <laughs> set what do you mean you're at soup <laughs> i mean i'm at soup no <laughs> soup for you <laughs> <laughs> there needs what to be store are you in? Just uh, this uh, needs to be a chase, and there's like no soup for you. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I still think uh, thorax, thorax best changeling. Uh, uh yeah. Uh, and still I also so bloody cute. I also now starting to like like the new changelings uh, redesign for like the hive. <laughs> like it's certainly. Oh, yeah. uh, it certainly looks nice. The only thing that seems a bit off-putting is just like uh, the king of the forest drone for Thorax. It's like you're right. giving all the elves and all the, like the Lord of the Forest vibes there. Right. It, his design almost reminded me of that of that comic of that character from the comic. It almost I was like just I was thinking like you tried not to tried not to rip off that design, but king. Um... <laughs> Arbor, yes. Just uh, even now in season seven, the show can at least uh, provide some interesting uh, takes with like some of these new writers just taking the brunt right now. True, true that. Anybody else? Any other opinions? Going once. Going twice. Sold. All right. I guess see y'all next week. Good night. Bye. Take care.